SMT Nation, we back. Folks, I found this article, and this one in particular, really, really good one from Jeff Bumgarner over on lightreading.com. I'll be sure to link it for you in the description. We're going to be talking about AT&T in response to this article. I'll offer some commentary. We'll go through some of the numbers. AT&T had a great quarter. So many things to discuss about it. We covered it in live stream. You know, I covered it on the podcast, but sometimes I know not everybody watches. Plus, with this article, we get a little bit more in-depth analysis. So uh, check it out. Link in the description. Also in the description is the SMT Buy Me a Coffee link. If you want to support your creators, that's one way you could do it. You can also check out our partner, Mint Mobile. They just increased data allotments on each of their plans, increasing the value. Didn't even touch the price. Kept it the same. Really, really good deals, folks. You get legendary customer care, capacitive network access, all for great prices. All right, use our partner link. It's in the description. You'll be saving money. You'll be helping out the channel. All right, so the title here from the article, not really too much of what we're going to focus on in this particular video, but it's titled AT&T Warming to Fix Wireless Access as Fiber Subscriber Growth Pays Slows. All right, so the, it's it, a little bit kind of, I guess, overstated in a way. Uh, what AT&T says they've experienced significantly lower move activity led to their subscriber growth kind of just being flat. All right, AT&T added 272,000 new consumer fiber subscribers in Q1 of 2023. They now have 7.48 million. Uh, the analysts were expecting AT&T to add 291,000, right? So that means AT&T came just below expectation. Fiber ARPU increased by over 9%. All right, so they went from, I believe, $60.41 to $65.92. Okay, so why are they making more money per user? Pretty simple. They offer higher capacity speed tiers, which they can charge more money for. Therefore, it brings the money on the ARPU level, increases it. All right, AT&T added about 600,000 new fiber locations in the quarter. Right, bringing that total to 19.7 million. I think they want to be to 30 million locations by the uh, year 2025. All right, and that's you know keeping all labor costs and uh, possible supply chain issues, you know, all kind of tracking for the good. AT&T fiber revenues have also increased year over year. They're up 31 percent. Okay, so revenues are up. ARPU is up. Those are really encouraging. This is the 13th consecutive quarter in which AT&T has exceeded 200,000 fiber subscriber net ads. So that seems like it's the magic number or the barometer. AT&T wants to stay above 200,000 on a quarterly basis. They have done that for over three years. And no sign of it slowing down. Uh, just as an additional uh, kind of, I guess, feather in the cap, they did increase the penetration rate for the fiber service from 37 to 38%. Uh, they are really doing well with that. All right, now there are some losses. This is something that's important to note about the AT&T wireline network. DSL customers are disconnecting or getting disconnected. Losses of 295,000 non-fiber subscribers. Uh, I think they lost, I think, 23,000 consumer broadband subs in the period overall. Uh, the DSL footprint continues to shrink. The consumer base continues to shrink. You know, AT&T emphasizing and focusing on fiber just basically shutting down the DSL side. As the DSL seems to be failing, they're just abandoning it and not necessarily putting fiber to replace it, right? So something that's horrible is watching people get disconnected and then AT&T not upgrading with fiber, right? They're actually building in new places, which seems kind of weird because you got <laughs> customers there existing. Anyways, all things considered, with the industry kind of slowing down, AT&T kind of holding court, things are looking pretty good. Uh, there's lots of money out there in the bead program for them. Uh, they've got the joint venture with Gigapower, right, uh, with BlackRock. They've got a uh, capital investor with them, and that's uh, they're sitting pretty. So focus, focus for AT&T, again, continues to be fiber and wireline. They do very well with it. You could see why. They grow. They're profitable. That's still going to be the emphasis. Now, for the back half of this video, I want to focus on fixed wireless access. It looks like AT&T is absolutely starting to warm to the idea that maybe they can offer fixed wireless access, internet connectivity from their wireless network. Now, it's not something they want to scale. It's not something they want to do in a big way. 
I think what they want to do is use it in scenarios or situations. Areas where tower sites have excess capacity and AT&T wants to reduce the instance that a customer may leave because they're losing like DSL connectivity. So a fixed wireless access product allows them to monetize their wireless network build, retain customer to hopefully reduce any type of churn on the home broadband side. So according to him, this is a quote, we're in the process of scaling up so that we make sure that we do it the right way. We're going to use it where we think we can offer a customer a better set of services than what they currently have. All right, so that makes sense. Underutilized capacity, even if let's let's just call it a hundred thousand customers, right? In a, in a in in a ten state region or something, and each customer pays fifty bucks a month, sixty bucks a month, whatever. It is revenue. It is revenue for building tower sites. It is revenue for upgrading fiber circuits. It is revenue for anything. If indeed the capacity is just sitting there, not being utilized. Again, you're not just doing it anywhere. You don't want to compromise the network. You don't want to do it in places where you have fiber. All of that seems to make sense. But I'm very happy to see that at and is finally warming to situations where fixed wireless access makes sense. What do you guys want to see from at and Continue to emphasize the fiber? Or should they give fixed wireless access some more love and some more attention? Or do you think... What they're kind of doing right now is good, which is full speed ahead fiber and situationally looking at fixed wireless access. Love to hear what you guys have to say on this. You all the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard.